It's still plus politics. Now, the Court of Appeal has set aside the judgment of the Federal High Court in Umahia, which voided the provision of Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act of 2022. In a judgment in Abuja, a three-member panel of the court held that the Federal High Court, Umahia, had no jurisdiction to have entertained the case because of the plaintiff. Nduka Edidi lacked the local standing to have filed the suit in the first place. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has directed that all members of the Federal Executive Council running for elective offices must submit their letters of resignation on or before Monday, the 16th of May, 2022. Well, joining us to break this down is Richard Wokocha, Professor of Public Law, River State University, and Tamano Williams, a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Thank and you. Good evening, Nigerians. Great. Um, I'll start with you, um, Professor Walker Chat. Let's look at the, the, the beginning of all of this. The fact that um, a man took a suit, uh, lodged a case against the, uh, that clause, of course, in the Electoral Act. Um, many people have said that the likes of um, the former governor of Akwaibom State, Senator Gospel Akwaibu, are saying that um, that particular um, act uh, does not affect them, being that they're not necessarily public office holders as what the Constitution says, that they are elected officers. And this is where the argument began. And there are also people who are saying, well, the Electoral Act is what should guide the elections. Why should that be contested? But you are the lawyer here, so educate us. Well, first, um, they are political appointees. And... Um, the provision of the section affects all political appointees. Um, until now, there is no provision in the Act that allows them to participate in Congresses as elect, former elected officials. Mm -hmm. That is being worked on now. An amendment is going on now to bring that on as part of the section. Uh, but as at now, there is none, and they are bound to obey section 84, subsection um, uh, 12. They are bound to obey it. Otherwise, there will be their consequences as spelled out in section 84, subsection 13, against their party if they do not obey it. But then, the, what, what does it mean when the courts say they're avoiding it, being that the person who lodged this suit in the first place has no local standing? And this is what the appeal court is saying. Um, in plain terms, in layman terms, what does that mean? Local standing is the capacity to institute a suit. Uh, with respect to suits of this nature, or anyone who institutes a suit, must show that he has an interest which the law ought to protect, which is threatened by the action of the party against whom he is bringing the suit. Uh, if you look at section 46, subsection 1 of the Constitution, which talks of the right of people to approach court, there's anyone who feels that his right is threatened or is affected by any such action in relation to him. That is a qualifying factor there. In relation to him can approach the courts. So if you just feel that an act is not right and you want to go to court over that, there is nothing you are asking the court to protect you from. There is nothing affecting you. There is no interest directly affecting you that you are approaching the court to protect. So local standing is the capacity to institute a suit and cause a court to invoke its jurisdiction in your favor. Mm -hmm. So what the court said in that, uh, in that judgment is that the gentleman who went to court did not in any way show that he is affected by this law he is talking about. Okay. He is not uh, an aspirant. He is not one who bought from. He is not even saying he intends to buy from. And is he being held back by that provision? He did not link himself in any way with the inconvenience he alleges that the act is going to cause, or the breach of right he alleges that the act is going to cause. So, in the opinion of the court, he did not. He was not a qualified person to bring that action before the high court, and the high court ought not to have uh, donated his jurisdiction to hear his cause because he did not disclose anything that he wants the High Court to protect for him. Okay. Um, Barista Williams, I think we're ha having some audio feedback from you. I don't know if that is a fan that is close to you, but we're hearing so much noise coming from you. I can hear you. you. 
Yes, we can hear you, but there's some feedback we're getting from you. I don't know if your fan is on or something, but it's affecting the audio that's coming from you. Anyway, uh, um, the People's Democratic Party had sued the president, uh, the attorney general of the federation, the Senate president, the speaker uh, of the House of Representatives and the clerk of the National Assembly. They also sued the Senate leader, the House of Representatives leader, and the Independent National Electoral Commission as of the first to eight defendants, respectively. Now, they are obviously also on this issue of um, why should political office holders continue to sit in their offices while they are running for several other offices. I mean, the list is endless. We have um, Chris Ngige, we have the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi. Um, I mean, the list, the list comes on. We have the AGF also who's interested in running for governorship um, in his state. Now, if Mr. President had not come up with this statement to try to douse this imbroglio, um, what do you think would have been done, especially with the former Governor Goswil Akbabi saying he's not going to resign? Pastor Williams, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, I can hear you. Um, yeah. uh, if I if, if, uh, align myself with uh, the submission made by the professor, you know, when, uh, when a law is passed, you cannot choose and pick which section to obey. Uh, as it stands today, section 8412, provided that for if you are a political appointee, you, have, you cannot vote and be, be voted for in any convention or Congress. Now, my first thing is that uh, the way that section is, 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 is couched is very inelegant. If you look at the other section, when I look at it, it's not, it's not clear. It, it doesn't go straight to the point. And I see it as a section that was brought in uh, in a hurry. Now, with respect to Senator Akpabio's argument, it's neither here nor there. A law has been passed. The import of the law is clear. Those who are affected know. Arguing that he's not uh, an appointee cannot exclude him from the efficacious power of that section. He will only know see the level of his calamity when he may have won the elections and then the court strikes down that election. Now, there is a court of appeal judgment, very fresh. Though I have not been privileged to look at the judgment uh, in itself, but from the commentaries we read, uh, the court said that uh, the young man that went to court, of course, as the learned professor said, lacks local standing. However, it went on to void that section uh, 8412. So my worry is that, I don't know what jurisprudence is that. You have said the man doesn't have local standing. But you've gone ahead to, to make pronouncement on the validity of that section. I, I, it seems to be a little bit uh, uh, difficult for me to, to wrap around my head. But for Fabio, I will advise him very clearly Again, he has instilled the, 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 the worry, the, 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 the inconvenience of resign or no resign. I hear in, the, uh, in this 6 o'clock bulletin that Mr. President has said that those who want to contest election have up to 16 of this month to resign. Yes. So Aquabio's uh, uh, argument is, is, is mute now. I think that, that is my take on that matter. Great. Uh, back to you, Professor. I wonder, because everybody is not necessarily clear um, on what that court judgment is saying, but thank goodness the president has come to save us from wondering if this, uh, you know, means anything for um, all his appointees. But going forward now, because this is not the only elections we're going to have, and if these um, loopholes are not plugged within our constitution or the Electoral Act, of course, it might arise again, maybe in our next election cycle. What should be done now to deal with these loopholes or this... Um, confusion as to whether there is jurisdiction or no, no jurisdiction so that court cases like this might no longer emerge or suits like this might not be filed against public office holders who intend to run for office but also want to sit tight in those offices that they already hold? Well, I think the law is already clear. Um, the law as it exists now is already clear. 
I, I was never in doubt that that law is not in conflict with the Constitution uh, because the relevant sections that the High Court considered were sections relating to civil servants or public servants contesting in general elections. The restrictions there were for any civil servant and in section uh, Section 308, which is the definition section, interpretation section, the Constitution makes it clear what it means by civil servants or public servants. It says persons who are employees of the civil service or public service of the Federation or of a state. So it's very clear. That is talking of civil servants wanting to run for general election or for elections. And it's talking of public servants, employees, Political appointees are not employees of the civil service. They leave office when the person who appointed them leaves office. They are not subject to civil service rules. They are not. So for them to say um, they will work with the Constitution, the Constitution does not cover them. It does not provide for their category of persons. Mm -hmm. It provides for employees of the civil service or public service of the Federation or of the state. This law is different. If you cast your mind to Section 228 of the Constitution, it gives power to the National Assembly to provide for regulation of internal party affairs mm -hmm. and to ensure um, internal democracy in political party affairs. And it gives National Assembly powers to provide for regulation of congresses, conventions, and primaries. It is that power that the National Assembly has put into action. It is our power that they have used to make this act, which provides for political appointees mm -hmm. in internal party affairs, not general election. It does not inconvenience anybody. It does not conflict with the Constitution. If the Constitution says resign at least one month before election, resigning one year before election is not in conflict. What would be in conflict is resigning two weeks before election or three weeks before election. Mm -hmm. But anything before that one month is in consonance with the Constitution and not in conflict. Mm -hmm. Now, concerning the judgment of today, I think it's a question of the reportage uh, by the um, journalists who reported it. I think we, are, we can all only speculate now because we have not seen the text of the judgment. I think that he reported later what the court said Obita before giving Obita, the judgment. Yes. Yes. What the court said, in every judgment, there are two sides. There is a racial dissident, which is the reason for the decision mm -hmm. in resolving the question that was posed <clears throat> before the court. And then there is the obita dictum. An obita dictum is a statement or an analysis the court makes by the way that does not address the issue that the court is deciding on. So that would have been a statement the court made, obita, before arriving at the judgment notwithstanding that, that in this case, the party who brought the suit lacked jurisdiction. Because there is no way the court can say the judgment is set aside and follow it up with the suit is struck out and then go back again to giving a judgment on the merits. It's impossible. So I think the gentleman reported what happened earlier, later, after stating what the judgment was. Okay. Uh, we can only speculate, but I believe that's what happened because you cannot have it the way um, the reporter reported it. He okay. must have reported the earlier comments made by the court <clears throat> after reporting the racial dissident die of the case. I think that's what happened in that case, and we'll get to know as the judgment becomes uh, available to the public. Now, let's take a look at what Mr. President said today at the Federal Executive Council meeting, which has now given um, an ultimatum. Um, well, this was um, transmitted by the information um, minister uh, about these office holders and the days that they had to resign or submit their resignations uh, before uh, they go into their campaigns. Well, let's take a listen to Mr. Lai Mohammed, and then when we come back, we'll talk. Any other member of the Federal Council aspiring either to be president or senator or governor or any elective office 
must submit a state of resignation latest by the 16th of May 2022. Mr. President has the right to ask to appoint members of his cabinet, reshuffle them, replace them, and to that extent, I think he has the right to say those of them that you want who are serving him, who he has appointed, and they want to run for office, irrespective of circumstances that he, as Mr. President, who has the power of nomination, I think he has the right to ask them to resign. And this, I, do, I don't think this is an issue that um, uh, falls within, well, I don't want to commit myself, but let me just receive myself to say that I believe that the Mr. President has the right to appoint, remove, reshuffle, or change any minister. Mr. Terminal Williams, uh, the Minister F F of Information there, Mr. Lai Mohammed, relating Mr. President's um, message to all his appointees. And we have a long list of these appointees. We have including the Ministers of Transportation, Rosimia Mechi, Niger Delta, Godfrey Lakbabio. We have Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige. Science and Technology and Information, Ogunaya Onu. Minister of State for Education, Emeka Mwajioba. Uh, the Justice and Attorney General, Bubaka Malami, all of these people uh, have either joined the presidential race or are running for a different office, as, as we all know. Um, so it, it makes things a lot more interesting. How do we see this playing out? Of course, they will have to resign because this is what their principal has said. But then we also know that the All Progressive Congress has so many presidential aspirants and um, there might just have to be a consensus candidate at the end of the day. Uh, what happens to the rest of them? Uh, well, I, I don't know of a uh, uh, consensus candidate. Uh, I, uh, that would be within uh, the bosom of, of the political juggernauts, and then the, the, the stakeholders. But I think that what the minister has communicated, uh, first I have a problem with the communication uh, dynamics, you know. Um, I, I think that what should have been done would have been a memo from the president to all the affected persons that uh, what uh, pursuant to the extant, law, extant laws of the land, I uh, hereby direct that uh, all those who are in this category kindly uh, uh, resign X, Y time. And it won't really, it's not really uh, a breaking news. But, uh, you know, the, the Minister of Information came and uh, made it as if it was uh, a, a landmark issue. Uh, principally, he has saved uh, the party and then those affected from taking unwarranted risks of saying, I'm a public servant uh, in the Code of Conduct Bureau, uh, I'm this. Now, at the end of the day, I, uh, it will have been a big leg, leg, legal battle. But there's one phrase that I, I quarrel with, you know, with due respect, that those who are serving the president, the ministers are not serving the president. They are serving the, our country, Nigeria. Yes, he has the right to fire and uh, hire and to fire. But you see, we should try to evolve a culture where appointees see themselves uh, uh, principally as people who are serving the nation. I just want to but but but, but then then there's that Legalism. there's also that phrase where people yes. say they serve at the pleasure of the president being no, that he's not, given them that yeah. opportunity so i'm guessing and i'm not in any way speaking for the, the minister i'm just saying maybe this is what he meant no 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 no. he, 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 he is a lawyer a seasoned administrator you see it, the earlier we begin to inculcate in all of us in our children that any position you hold is service to nation is fundamental Lai Mohammed know, he knows better. So, but the point is that this particular directive from, from, from uh, Mr. President, it resolves the issue. And I'll tell you another point. Uh, they may put in their letters on the 16th of, uh, of May, and after the, the Congresses, those who are not successful will just come back and resume. Because there is no requirement that because you have put in your letter of resignation, that you must come back with the return from your appointer that that letter has been accepted. You know, in my thinking, what you require to show at that screen is to say, look, I have resigned X day before 
the, the ultimatum given or before the day of the, the, the primary. Mm. You don't need to come back with an acceptance letter from the minister. That's my thinking. And of course, if there's no acceptance letter from, me, from, from, from the president, after the convention, the president can say, well, I, re I, I do not accept. I reject your application for resignation. That means such a minister will automatically assume office. He does not need to go back to Senate or be represented. Okay. So I think that technically, all those aspirants who are picked up from, they now have a leeway, you know, a legal safety net with which they can resign, contest, if they lose, and come back. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you, Professor um, Wokocha, Richard Wokocha is a professor of public law, River State University, and Tamano Williams is a lawyer uh, in River State. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. Thank you for being part of the conversation. We appreciate your thoughts. And on that note, before we say our thank yous and our goodbyes, Nigerians are speaking their minds on President Goodluck Jonathan's rumored uh, presidential ambitions. We'll take a listen to that. And on that note, I say good night. Thank you for being part of the show. We'll be back tomorrow on your screens talking for development. I am Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good evening. Somebody of his caliber should not come so low. To accept that. Okay, moreover, the PDP that, 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 was the, that was the platform for him to earn that respect is, is, is by so doing, brought under ridicule. For him to dump the PDP that took him to such heights and then cross carpet to APC in this kind of uh, embarrassing situation. It's uncalled for. In fact, it's going to be politically suicidal for him. And that will rubbish the respect he has earned over the years, locally and internationally. I see it as something that they are playing now on intelligence, on Nigerian intelligence. How can the President Jonathan said he rejected? Is he going to tell us that he doesn't know that those people are going to obtain funds for him? Has he never met up with those group before? So can he just... It's not possible for a group to... Uh, just wake up one day and say, ah, we are purchasing a form for somebody. And the person now said he's rejecting it. Alimajiri's people, who are they? Do we have association of Alimajiri in Nigeria? These are the people some governors are chasing away. Alimajiri now gang themselves up and saying they are obtaining 100 million naira of form. Purchasing it for an ex-president. Ex These are the people that, that are turning on our intelligence. While we are having ASU, they are on strike. Can them gather this money and then pay the salary of ASU? Eh? Look at our children, they are outside. He should reject it. You understand? As he, he rejected it, it's very, very good. To my own opinion. Because as a, as a stakeholder, he's not, he's not supposed to come back for the president. You understand? Eh? They just want to, the way I'm seeing it, they just want to kill his spirit concerning the political, uh, uh, what is going on in this society. I hope you understand what I'm saying. If, if, if he must come out for the, for election, not Meyatiala that we bought a form for him. So he need to reject that. And if he's coming for, for aspirants, there are not APC.